Hi, I'm Katie Ziskind. I'm the owner of Wisdom Within Counseling and Coaching. I'm a Gottman Level 2 Marriage Specialist, Relationship Coach, and a Certified Sex Therapy Informed Professional. This means that I love helping distant couples rebuild sexual connection, rebuild sexual desire, and break the cycle of sexual avoidance. So if you're stuck in a sexless marriage, you wish sex was more frequent, you're feeling sexually unwanted and rejected, and just alone, wondering how to rebuild the passion and the spark, I would love to support you and your partner in doing so. You can book your phone consultation to work with me at wisdomwithinct.com. That's wisdomwithinct.com. In this video today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about sex and intimacy. So when you're in a sexless marriage, at one point you may have had a hot and heavy connection, you may have felt really close and like sex was really positive, or maybe for the entirety of your relationship, sex and initiating sex, talking about your sexual fantasies, adding in new sex toys, really diversifying your sex life has always been a challenge and that's okay too. So when you're in a cycle of sexual avoidance, you or your partner might start to feel self-conscious and insecure about your whole relationship. You also may start to get into frustrating arguments or angry arguments where tension is really high, sex becomes this topic that really is loaded, it's emotionally charged and it can put you both in a state of emotional dysregulation. So what this means is that when you start talking about sex or one of you says, hey, I want more sex and the other person starts to feel a certain way, anxiety increases, feelings of being a failure increase, um, and it really creates a very challenging conversation topic. So I help you navigate talking about sex confidently and making it a familiar, a beautiful conversation topic for your relationship. So um, when you're in a sexless or uh, sexually frustrating cycle, there are also feelings of lack of desirability. All of us want to be desired. All of us want to be seen as sexy or sexual. And when you want your partner to uh, help you express your sexual self or help you get into an erotic mindset or allow you to express yourself in a sexual way, and you feel like you can, they don't want that, and they're blocking you and limiting this connection, it can be very lonely, it can be very emotionally painful. And so sometimes one person in the relationship has you know, a really great sexual connection with themselves or a higher sex drive and wants more sex, and then the other person has a lower sex drive or maybe a complete disinterest in sex altogether. Or maybe there's just, uh, just a lack of libido, maybe life is stressful, you're building a career, low desire can come from, you know, stress on the mind, it can come from that mental piece of experiencing trauma, grief, loss, all of these emotions can really weigh down and dampen the sex drive. So there are a lot of components when it comes to breaking the cycle of sexual uh, avoidance and sexual withdrawal. So part of this is imp improving the communication that you have between you and your partner. We need to create an emotionally secure environment. This means that instead of um, having the cycle of avoidance and rejection, uh, we start to create more emotional reassurance, emotional comfort, emotional intimacy, and we do so by supporting vulnerability. This means naming the emotions you experience, confiding in your partner, asking your partner about their worries, their concerns, their deepest fears, really building this vulnerable space where you can both be seen and both feel valued and appreciated on an emotional level. So emotional intimacy and emotional communication are key elements when it comes to breaking the cycle of sexual avoidance and sexual withdrawal. Now, it's really common to avoid talking about sex when it is so emotionally heated. So as a result, sex itself becomes something to avoid because it's just so anxiety filled. You might fear, you know, that it will make your partner mad if you ask for it, or you might fear that um, your partner will start crying or feel so self-conscious, or there'll be this negative emotion as a result of wanting to talk about sex. So. Um, it's really important to have a safe space to talk about sexual fantasies, sexual expectations, sexual needs, libido, and you know what kind of helps you feel in the mood, what gets your mind in that state of excitement and pleasure, and then what are things that also block it? Because we all have things that can block us from getting in the mood. So for instance, say you and your partner are getting in the mood a little bit, 
you know, we know relaxation is a precursor to sexual arousal. So we need to be relaxed first and foremost. Let's say there's a little relaxation building. Think of something in your mind that might block your body from getting more aroused. Maybe it's a memory of trauma from the past where your body was touched in an unwanted way. Perhaps it's your own inner critic telling you that your breath smells bad or that you don't deserve pleasure or even memories of religious trauma. Being raised in a conservative, strict religious upbringing can play a role when it comes to sexual shame and, you know, fearing um, these sexual urges and sexual pleasure. It, or there may also be a blockage around a stressful thing you're going through in life. You know, you might even have a voice inside your head that says, I have many better things to be doing than laying here receiving pleasure. So sometimes there can be mental blockages. We also have things that help accelerate sexual desire and help increase that feeling of embodiment and relaxation. And that's that place where we can be mentally present in the present moment, the here and the now to receive and give pleasure. So things like that might be talking to your partner about what you want them to do more of when it comes to touching your body. Maybe you love your neck touch, your neck kissed. Maybe you really want your partner to kiss your neck more. Maybe you really like your belly touched and you want your partner to caress your belly. You really like long, gentle strokes or um, long, grazing fingertips on your body. Or you really like to talk about sex and what it, your expectations are in advance. Right? All of these things can help get you in the mood and get your mind, which is your biggest sex toy, um, involved in the bodily experience. So there's this piece of really opening up the conversation around sex in a positive way pleasure-oriented way because so often in our society we grow up with messages that make us focus on obligatory sex meaning we have to do it for our partner's pleasure because we're afraid they're going to cheat on us if we don't give them the sex that we think they need um, as well there is obligatory sex of let's add it to the to-do list and there's uh, disengagement emotionally in that process as well, we also have this idea around sex being for something. It ha we can only have pleasurable sex or sex if it's for procreation, if it's for getting pregnant. And then otherwise, it just falls to the bottom of the to-do list. And so part of what we do together is creating sex as a recreational hobby that brings you both pleasure. Another piece around sex that we work to overcome are really... Um, uh, unrealistic expectations created by pornography. So pornography is a form of erotic stimulus. You can get turned on by watching it, but it is not real life. So it's really important to recognize that pornography um, is really just paid actors and actresses and they're putting on a show and they're faking pleasure. And so when we look at pornography, um, we have to recognize that it doesn't show emotional intimacy. It doesn't show emotional foreplay. It doesn't show adequate for foreplay for the female or vulva system. Um, and so we can develop actually unrealistic expectations around what we think our sex life should be or what we think our body should do to be seen as successful or what we should do to be a good lover. We can get these really a lot of misinformation from pornography. We might think that our partner might like something that we see in pornography, but they really might not like it. Or we might think that we have to make our partner orgasm in order to be a good lover, to have a good boost of self-esteem. But an orgasm is a byproduct of presence, of pleasure, of emotional connection and synergy. So you don't have to make anything happen in order to have a sense of self-confidence. And so a lot of times we have to remove these myths and misinformation. So a lot of times men or penis owners think they have to have a hard penis to, you know, be a good lover. And it's really, there's so much pressure on having a hard penis and that can create things like erectile dysfunction because your mouth, your hands, sex toys, your hot breath, your voice can all be much more powerful in supporting your partner and experiencing pleasure rather than a hard penis. Many females or vulva owners do not orgasm from vaginal penetration, which means you don't really need a hard penis anyway. And the female G-spot really is only about two inches inside the vulva. So, you know, fingers, a sex toy can all stimulate that area actually more effectively oftentimes than an erect penis. So pornography puts so much pressure on staying hard um, and maintaining a, an erection when really that is, is just one piece of the pie when it comes to pleasure and 
and we need to let go of some of these really intense, unrealistic expectations. Um, and so we do so in, sec in our sessions together. Another piece around breaking the cycle of sexual avoidance is understanding um, like what sex means. So, so often um, sex, we think of sex and we think of vaginal, penis, penetrative sex. And sex is so much more in that, more than that. Building sexual desire, getting into that sexual self, getting connected to your sexual expression, your erotic side, you know, out of the mom mode, out of the dad mode, out of the career building mode, out of caring for your in-laws mode, out of parenting mode, out of all of these responsibility hats that you wear during the day and shifting into your erotic self um, and pleasure self, you know, it, it takes some time. And so, you know, life can be hectic, life can be chaotic. And so really shifting into that sexual self is a big piece of things. And sometimes we forget how to do that when you're at work, building your career, focusing on making income, those things take up a good chunk of your mental endurance. And so in order to shift into expressing yourself in a more sexual way, you know, it takes time to reconnect with yourself. So in order for sex to come back, we have to broaden our definition, broaden the horizon of sexual energy. So sexual connection is not just penis and vagina sex. It's also snuggling on the couch, it's cuddling before you go to bed together, making a point to go to bed together at the same time, taking time to shower together rather than taking a five minute quick managerial shower, in and out shower. Instead of doing a quick shower by yourself, or even with your partner, take the time to have a luxurious shower where you wash each other with body wash, where you're washing each other's backs, you're really enjoying this se sexual and um, physical communication that's outside of penetrative sex. So your erotic energy can start to build outside of those bedroom experiences. Your partner's washing the dishes. You're going to come up behind your partner and wrap your arms around their belly and you're going to initiate touch in a non-sexual way that supports comfort, relaxation, and playfulness, which supports then libido to develop. So I want you to think about how you can bring in more non-sexual, comforting, and relaxing touch that then can create a foundation for the evolution of desire and the increase of that erotic, exciting energy that really supports arousal. So we need to have touch more so back rubs on a weekly basis foot rubs excuse me and this allows you to embrace not only your partner's sensuality but also your own sensuality our skin is our largest organ so we do need to have more touch and that helps to support a healthy loving passionate and pleasurable sex life now another piece of um, breaking the cycle of sexual avoidance is working um, through any trauma. So sexual avoidance can come from experiences of sexual trauma, emotional trauma, physical trauma, and psychological trauma. So when you are in a cycle of sexual avoidance and shame, there could be religious trauma. You grew up in a strict conservative religious upbringing, a purity culture, an abstinence culture that really created a cycle inside of you of sexual avoidance. So the cycle of sexual avoidance may even have been beginning before you and your partner got together. You may experience shame, guilt, you know, and even feel very at much in conflict with your own sexual urges. And sexual urges are a normal part of being human, but sometimes we can have our own sense of internalized shame and guilt because of the religious, conservative, and strict messages that we received growing up. So in adolescence, um, you may have been told that it was bad to be gay or bad to be bisexual, and the only way to be was to be straight. That message is around sexual orientation. And if you are anything but straight, there is inherent shame or guilt that you may be carrying. And so this process is about loving yourself just the way you are, knowing that it's awesome. You know, we can be aroused by any gender. We can be aroused by any nationality. We can start to push these push back on these very shame, guilt, and fear-based messages that are oftentimes rooted in a strict conservative religious upbringing. And sometimes experiences of sexual abuse and trauma uh, can start to be talked about so we can create more safe, consensual, and respectful sexual experiences that are associated with pleasure, right? Because oftentimes when we have sexual trauma, it's associated with fear, pain, and anxiety. I don't want more bad things to happen to me, which is a normal self-protection mechanism and avoidance is a trauma response. So when we look at 
overcoming this cycle, we have a safe partner. We work together to build a safe container for building positive affirming thoughts around our bodies, overcoming those trauma responses, gaining sex positive education, talking about fantasies, expectations, desires, and really deepening both emotional and sexual intimacy. So I would love to talk more with you about this topic. It's an area that I am so passionate about when it comes to supporting couples and having long lasting love. Oftentimes, you know, sex is something that we don't feel comfortable talking about, or if we do, it's emotionally charged. So I would love to give you a safe place to talk about your sex life, to start to open up the conversation, start to rebuild desire, start to create this sense of openness, synergy, and connection through the physical world so that you can both be sexual, erotic, embodied beings and know that you deserve pleasure and experience amazing orgasms and also have the foundation of emotional expression, emotional intimacy, and emotional security that allows that desire to build. Because that emotional intimacy is what supports relaxation in our nervous system which is the precursor to sexual arousal. So I love helping distant couples who need support, breaking the cycle of sexual avoidance. Um, there are many pieces to the pie. And if you and your partner would like to overcome emotions like shame, guilt, anxiety, you know, inner criticism, self-consciousness, you know, and there's this cycle of withdrawal, avoidance, rejection, isolation, there's definitely hope. And I specialize in sex and intimacy with couples. So I'm a Gottman Level 2 marriage therapist, uh, relationship coach. I incorporate emotionally focused therapy. I'm a certified sex therapy informed professional. And I would love to support you in building a strong and healthy couple bubble and improving both the emotional intimacy and the sexual intimacy in your marriage. You can book a free phone consultation to work with me at wisdomwithinct.com. That's wisdomwithinct.com.